welcome to the 33rd lecture on the uh, course nptel course on architectural acoustics we are in the, the se uh, seventh week and this is the third lecture of the seventh week mm, uh, the last lecture on the airborne sound transmission so the lecture uh, title is airborne sound transmission 3 so the 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 learning objective of this lecture are we will describe this lecture what is the coincidence effect and what is the impact of the coincidence effect in the transmission loss of a partition wall. And we will try to uh, formulate a methodology and uh, the, to evaluate some the value we have a partition wall that is called the STC sound transmission class value of a partition wall. So, uh, quickly go to the a slide where we have already discussed this particular slide in the very first lecture of our trans sound transmission airborne sound transmission. This tra uh, transmission loss T L is depend upon two uh, physical parameter. Of course, there are various others also, but these two are very important and very significant. One is surface mass of the partition wall and another one is the sound frequency. and as we understand that this per octave uh, increase, increase in the octave or the per octave the sound frequency of if it is doubled from the lowered one the transmission loss is increased by 6 dB. This is follow a kind of a stiff uh, straight line graph kind of a thing where you can plot the frequency in the the x axis and the sound transmission loss in the y axis and you can see the transmission loss is something like this this through this particular follow this particular straight line but in actually you will follow this green line where there is a sudden flat plateau and then again there is a increment so if you produce this line with a, uh, the blue dotted line this is the tl the transmission loss as per the mass law and this green line indicate the, there is a slight change in the T L as per the frequency change and there is a kind of a plateau is available here. And this is also true that the sound transmission loss is low in case of the low frequency. So, the sound energy passes through in a low frequency less whereas, the high frequency more sound energy passes through. So, there is a high T L value or sound energy isolate is isolation is very very high. So, next is the in the in the, this case again if I uh, see this try to find out why there is a depression why this particular kind of the changes occur and what are the significant role of this particular change in a partition wall. We say there are we can see that there are three such the geometric parameter one is the this dip which is called the coincidence dip which is almost about 5 to 15 db and this is a width of the plateau how much plateau will be longer it is shorter or the longer plateau it depends upon the the damping of the transmitter that this partition wall how much damping of the sound is going to create and this plateau height or this coincidence dip this 2 plateau height in this particular coincidence dip is depend upon the, the stiffness of the partition wall how much it is stiff how much it is rigid. So, these three phenomena gives us a kind of a uh, the, the kind of a the, uh, understanding that uh, the even if the frequency if its frequency increases the uh, transmission loss is going to increase, but it is not same for all the range of the frequency somewhere it is kind of a, uh, a jerk and then there is again it is follow a particular straight line. And this particular phenomena is called coincidence effect. The coincidence effect is that suppose there is a partition wall and by virtue of the partition wall the mass and the uh, stiffness and the damping factor and all those the physical parameters it has a shear wave capacity or the some vibration mode 
and this vibration mode can be described with its natural frequency. And if the incident frequency of the sound, which is actually the incident sound wave, is matches with this shear wave or the phase of this particular vibration, then this frequency, the incident frequency and its own natural frequency matches together, then there is a resonating effect. Then the sound will going to pass through the maximum amount. So, that is why there is a sudden dip in this particular the, uh, the PL value of the partition wall. So, the what happened is that, so in a part, any, a, any particular uh, object has its own natural frequency and if that matches with the incident sound wave, it passes a huge amount of sound because of the resonance. And this vibration of this particular partition wall will coincident, when it is coincident with the incident wave, this is called is a coincident effect, coincident effect and due to that there is a gradual change or there is a sudden dip in this frequency and T L curve. So, a normal frequency T L curve will look like this, the initials in the short frequency range, there is a lots of dips and undulations. This can be described as there are some kind of a stiffness control and there are some kind of a localized resonated reson uh, resonance is can be happened. So, that, that is where there is a some undulations. Stiffness control means suppose a wall having the same surface mass but it is stiffened by some regular interval by some structurally the structurally strengthened material then this particular ma this particular uh, the partition wall can be act as a very stiffened very rigid and it can have a kind of a control in the particular uh, frequency uh, uh, particular transmission loss but if it is not stiffened the it is not in regular only in the edges or maybe only one in between and only in the edges, then it is not that much of stiffen and there is a decrease in the, the stiffness and the T L values of so. But after certain amount of the frequency, after certain initial frequency band if you leave with this kind of a disturbance, then it is follow a straight line, a follow straight line and this is your mass law as per the mass law 6 dB increase as per the octave or the 6 dB increase as per the doubling of the mass or so. It will continue in some portion and then there is a dip, there is a coincidence effect. But this coincidence effect will initiate in a certain point and it will follow a dip or follow a plateau and then again it will follow the curve which is a 6 dB per octave or the 6 dB is a doubling of the mass curve. So, this line and this line is parallel, but there is a offset between these two line, there is offset between these two line. Now, this frequency where this particular coincidence effect is initiated is called the critical frequency or that is the frequency of the natural frequency or the phase frequency of the particular uh, wall which matches with the the incident frequency. So, if you have a different partition wall of different material, this critical frequency point may be somewhere here, maybe 500 or maybe in 4000. So, this may change, this may change depending upon the, the critical frequency point may change because of the, the nature and the material of the partition wall. So, we are landed up in a problem. The problem is the number one is I need a single value of a transmission loss to design a particular noise barrier or a uh, partition wall, single value. Why single number average value? Because that is help me to decide to get, get some kind of decision that which partition wall, uh, wall I will use for my purpose for my noise reduction. But a single value average value of the transmission loss is always going to mislead me. Why it is mislead me? Because 
it is depend upon various frequency. And not only it is depend upon various frequency, there is a critical frequency also where there is a coincidence, coincidence dip. And initially there is some kind of a disturbance because of the stiffness and the damping. So, if I uh, uh, calculate the average value for all the T L over the range of the frequency, it will definitely going to mislead me. But what is the what is the, the way I can find out? So, still it is we are depending upon a single numbers transmission loss. Some methodology has to be established that can can the, the uh, decrease this particular misleading phenomena or it will just dilute some way uh, uh, may not be it will be accurate in nature, but still a single number transmission loss uh, can give me a kind of understanding with some method that yes this particular partition wall if I use uh, average in a term in average term with maybe a 10 percent error 10 to 15 percent error maximum that give me this much amount of the sound reduction or the transmission loss. So, for that a standard system has been developed in United States and that is called the sound transmission class STC via a STC contour. And this, this, this particular STC contour was developed with a proper st st straight forward and a very uh, the step by step order methodology by the ASTM, the American Society for Testing and Material. So, we will discuss that how this particular the uh, steps uh, the way this STC value of a partition wall can be formulated can be found out and any kind of the, uh, the, produ uh, the product uh, uh, the partition wall product manufacturer and lot of the organization uh, the, the those who are actually the providing those kind of a solutions for the uh, partition wall solutions or maybe the noise acoustical solutions for the room, they actually go for this STC number or the STC rating of the partition wall uh, while designing any kind of the enclosure. So, there are 6 or 5 or 6 steps. The first one we have to test a particular partition wall uh, in a laboratory for various frequencies or so and the frequencies are 16 frequencies it starts from 125 hertz to 4000 hertz so this one the 16 frequencies are all one third octave band frequencies in between 125 to 4000 hertz then we have to plot a graph in between the the this frequency and the tl then we have to overlay STC contour because this graph which is we will plot in the step number 3 will be a very very haphazard kind of a graph. So, uh, I have to actually slice up some of the points and I have to go with a smoothening this graph with a kind of a contour with a kind of a the different segment of a straight line and I will find out the STC contour. And the fifth and final uh, the step is that from that STC contour I can get the, the single value that single value I am wanting for the STC value of the wall. So, all the 4 steps or the this 5 steps has some typical in the methods or some kind of a rules and we will describe that rules one after another. So, what is the first step is that we have to test the partition wall in a laboratory. So, we use that particular formula what we have used in the second lecture, the previous lecture T L is equal to L S minus L R minus uh, the uh, 10 log uh, alpha into S. So, uh, this is the particular equation and if I have a microphone uh, at the particular receiving room and a loudspeaker in the source room. So, I can find out with a dB meter that what is the L s that is the source room intensity of the sound and what is the level of the sound in the, in the receiving room. I can find out this I know those values and s and alphas and everything I can find out the T L values. And if I know the T L values I now have a table where all the 16 frequencies are listed down 
and I will pl I will find out the all the, uh, the corresponding actual T L value of all the 16 frequencies and all the frequencies 16 is from 125 to 4000 hertz actually covering the one third octave band one third octave band and out of that this blue color ones are the octave band the 125 250 in between that there are two one third and 250 to 5000 there are two octaves as one third octave like that. So, the 16 frequencies are th those T L actual values has to be plotted. So, after you plot in the frequency versus the T L plot for those 18 sorry 16 uh, octave frequency you will get the graph of this nature very haphazard kind of a graph. But uh, even though this is a very haphazard, there is a tendency of moving up. I mean, this is a the positive kind of a graph. So, as and when the frequencies increases, your T L values increases, but it may not follow a straight line. Probably at this particular point, there is a we follow a straight line. There is a kind of a disturbance over here. There is a deep and disturbance, and there is another disturbance because of maybe there is coincidence effect. So, there may be one or two coincidence effect in also. So, there are by virtue of the actual plot you will get those graph. But as I told in earlier just taking the averaging of all those values will not going to help me because there are some uh, the phenomena the coincidence phenomena and all. So, we have to go to the step number 4 where I will going to overlay a STC contour on that I will be just going to cut off some of the points and try to fit some straight line in a some the method with the some method. What are the method? So, first in this four the step number 4 the calculate the average T L value for the last 6 one third octave that is 1 to 5 0 to 4 thousand. So, what I did is that you have to find out the what are the average of this 1 2 3 4 5 6 this last 6 T L value and find out the what is the average of that and you plot the you plot the line. So, draw a straight line parallel to x axis of that particular and find out this the a b line is actually the average of those. So, some points will be above a b some points will be below a b. Now, let us go to the point number 4 c plot the point C over 4000 hertz frequency and 5 to be below A B line. So, that means, now you plot a point C over a 4000 frequency line and this will be below B, how much below? Now, 5 dB below B. So, you have you see this the from 1 to 5 0 this blue line to this 4400 this blue line there are 1 2 3 4 5 gaps. So, the 5 gaps means per octave uh, per frequency one third octave there is a decrease of 1 dB. So, I got the point C the I will join the line B C also the line segment B C is inclined and having 1 dB reduction per octave one third octave. Now, I have to go to the point D point D will be at this 125 the last line and the drop will be now 15 dB. Now, this is again inclined line to C to D and again from 400 to 125 there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 gaps. So, per one third octave there is a 3 dB decrease per uh, one third octave. So, if you go to that you see you plot the D over 125, 15 dB below and join this point C D. The line segment C D is also inclined having 3 dB reduction per one third octave. So, your A B C D the S T C contour is completed. So, what I did is that all those haphazard point is now strictly in a disciplined manner I have formulated a contour green contour line which is S T C contour, but this is not final you have to see some criteria you have to see a get a single number of this S T C we have to fi find out some of the criteria. What we have to do in the step number 5 a is that 
identify the frequency having the magnitude of the deficiency. What is the deficiency? The deficiency is that the difference between the STC contour and the TL value. So, I got this contour ABCD and this line is somewhere it is floating above and somewhere maybe it is dipping below your actual TL points. So, if it is floating above, so there is a deficiency. So, deficiency is defined as STC minus the actual TL. So, these are the deficiencies point, these are the deficiency point, but this is not the deficiency, this is where the TL is above your STC contour. So, you have to find out this deficiency in the seven, uh, 5 B step number 5 B, some of the deficiencies has to be calculated. What is the total amount of deficiency for all the 16? And we have to find out the total amount of deficiency is and you have to check these two criteria. The first criteria is that the sum of the deficiencies is less than or equal to 32 dB and second criteria is that the maximum deficiencies in any one band does not exceed 8 dB. These two criteria has to be fulfilled. So, if these two criteria has to be fulfilled like, so the first sum of the deficiency, so this sum the amount of this deficiency plus this plus this, so this all sum of the deficiencies should be less than or equal to 32 and any one, I mean you have to check every one. So, the maximum deficiency probably this one or maybe this one should not be less than 6 dB, less than 8 dB. And at the final stage in the 5, uh, 5 C, we have to there are two situation. If all criteria, both the criteria is satisfied, if both the criteria are satisfied, we go to the next trial of the STC control. We will we will, we will increase the trial STC contour by 1 dB and we will recalculate the or recheck the criteria or the step 5 A and 5 B and come again. And sometimes this criteria does not uh, uh, match with the criteria, the actual the, the, these deficiencies are may, may not match. So, then we will decrease the STC by 1 dB and again we recalculate or re uh, do the step number. 5A and 5B and it is a again a trial and error process and finally, we have, st have to stop at a particular point where both the criteria is fulfilled matches and we will find out the, the STC value for the 500. So, suppose this criteria is matches, so I have removed those points and this is the final STC contour ABCD and then correspondingly 500 hertz frequency, the value corresponding TL value will be my single value STC value of the wall. So, let us have a small example. In this example, what I did is that I have written down the actual TL value of a partition wall uh, from 125 hertz to 4000 hertz all the 16 one third octave band. So, by virtue of that if you plot, you will get a plot like this. Again you see in this plot there is some disturbance, there is a straight line portion and there is again a disturbance, but this may be a coincidence dip, this is a coincidence dip. And I have written down all the values for all the eight, uh, 16 frequencies for and in the x axis I have just mentioned the number of the, the frequency number, the band number. Now, you, the, if you remember the first step, what I have to did is that this last 6, this 40, 36, 33, 33, 45 and 47, just find out the average, the average is 39. So, average of the last 6 frequencies is 39. So, the next is that, next point is that this 400 frequency, here the 400 frequency TL decreased by 5, so it is 35 minus 5 and 1 dB decrease per octave, so 38, 37, 36 like that and this is 34. And then at 125, there is a 15 dB decrease from the earlier 
and that is 19. Why 19? Because 34 minus 15 is 19. So, there is a 6 dB decrease per 1 third octave band. So, 34, 31, 28, 25, 22 and 19. So, I can plot my STC contour overlay over my actual TL plot. And now, next step is that step of finding out the deficiencies. See here, this is above, this is also above, this is again above, there are again these two are above the STC. So, the above I do not want to take, above I do not having any interest, I have only interest in these dips, this is the deficiency from the STC line to the this the, the actual TL line, this is the point, this is the coordinate where I have to find out. So, I found out for all the this is the frequency one third octave band actual TL value, my first proposed STC first trial values and this 19 and this, this difference between 17 minus 19, suppose this is the first 17 and this is 19. So, deficiency is minus 2, minus 6, minus 7, minus 3, but here it is not deficiency, this is some increment. Um, suppose it is the 315, so this 33 and 31, 33 and 31, so those are positive. I am not at all interested with this positive values, this positive values, only I am interested in those negative values. So, what I did is that I got the full range of the deficiencies and all those red or the, uh, the, the this colored cell, I got the uh, summation of that. So, the in the first trial my all the summation are minus 30. So, total deficiency is minus 32 dB and the maximum deficiency among this is minus 7. So, what are the criteria? If you remember the criteria, the first criteria is that sum of the deficiencies is less than or equal to 32 is 34 minus 34. So, I have to redo the things. But the second criteria is fulfilled, it is not exceeded minus 8, it is, it is just minus 7. But the first criteria is failed over here, it is minus 34. I should have, I mean there should be, it is should be restricted to minus 32 dB or so. So, what I have to do? Uh, the, the option is, that we have to go to the next option, next trial, second trial of the STC contour. So, this STC, STC line, the green line I have developed that has to be lowered down by 1 dB. And if I lower down by 1 dB, the deficiencies will be less and we have to recalculate. So, I have the second trial with me, it was the first trial and the first trial I have the deficiencies are calculated minus 34, minus 7 and all. So, my second trial what I did, I have just decreased the value the STC contour by 1 dB. See, this is 39 over here, this is 38, last 5, 6, 38, then there is 34, that is 4, uh, 5, sorry, this 35 and this I go on decreasing by 1 dB and from 4,400 onwards decreasing by 3. Very similarly what I did over here and let us see, in this case, these are the deficiencies for the second case and if you add up, this is minus 26 and the highest is minus 6, both satisfied the criteria. Now, both satisfied the criteria and I can stop here, because I, I do not want to go to the further one less, because definitely that will be again classify uh, satisfy the criteria. So, my second trial of the STC control satisfied the criteria. So, on that line second trial, the corresponding TL value corresponding to 500 hertz is my the single digit STC value and that is 34. So, the 500 line hertz line striking to my this 34, uh, this uh, STC contour and that is give me the STC value is 34 dB and that is how I found out this particular transmission, say, uh, sound transmission class of a uh, wall. The next one is, if there is a hole in the wall. So, this hole will actually try to leak the noise. 
So, it is depend upon how much amount of noise will be leaked through the, the hole. So, suppose it is a very wonderful partition wall made by double leaf and all those and there is a hole that may spoil your total the, the, uh, the amount of uh, effort and all to the uh, reduce the noise from one source room to the receiving room. So, it is depend upon the, the percentage hole area S h by S 1 into 100. What is this S h? The area of the hole. What is S 1? The total area. The total area is S 1 and this S h is the amount of hole this ratio into 100. And what is T L 1? T L 1 is the transmission loss of the partition wall this partition wall and what is T L C is a combined transmission loss of hole when it is a hole. So, the T L 1 the partition uh, transmission loss of the partition wall is uh, placed in the x axis and the combined partition uh, the, uh, the transmission loss of the partition wall with hole is plotted in the y axis. It is again the some set of graph has been uh, standardized by virtue of some experiment. Suppose there is a graph. So, this is for the whole area is 0.1 percent. So, if it is 0.1 percent, so you can go with this graph. So, suppose 25 percent of the 20, if the T L of the, the partition wall is 25, if whether it is a 0.1 percent of the whole, it is little less than 25, maybe around maybe around 22, 20 uh, or 24 or something like that. If it is 10, so it is almost 10, there is no significant change. So, as the whole area is increased and the percentage whole area is also increased, this particular graph will now lower down. See, if it is 1 percent, you have to follow take this graph, 2 percent this thing. So, 50 percent you see, if there is a 50 percent hole, so then there is a, a huge reduction. So, 30 is equivalent to almost 3. So, if there is a 5 percent of the hole is there, a 30 actual gives you almost about 12 or so. So, let us have a uh, numerical problem. You have a door of 2 meter by 1 meter and in this door, the, 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 this door is having 30 dB T L and there is a size or the hole size, there is a hole in that particular door which is having 20 centimeter by 10 centimeter. So, the total area of the door is 2 meter square is 1 and total area of the hole is 200 centimeter square and the transmission loss of the partition wall without the hole is uh, 30 dB. There is a small uh, the uh, uh, typological error, this should be T L 1 is 30 dB um, and this percentage of the whole area is this. So, this is almost 1 percent. So, in that I uh, uh, have to see this 1 percent curve, the percentage of whole area is 1 percent curve and as this is uh, 30 dB, this transmission loss of the, uh, the wall is 30 dB. So, this T L 1 you have to actually this is T L 1, T L 1 is 30 dB. So, 30 dB is this and with corresponding to that uh, percentage of the whole area is 1 percent whole area gives you the uh, combined transmission loss as uh, 20 dB, this is 20 dB. So, actually this, uh, the, this particular hole of 20 centimeter by 10 centimeter over a door of 2 meter by 1 meter uh, uh, destroy almost 10 dB sound. I mean there is a leakage of 10 dB sound. So, that is all for this particular portion. So, I have noted down some of the, uh, the partition wall significant character. The, you have to increase the, the surface mass of the partition wall to establish reasonable maximum to get a good amount of TL. These are the some of the, the partition wall design criteria or the guidelines. Double leaf partition wall is better than the single leaf because there is a air cushion in between. So, uh, the doubling of the mass is also happening and there is a internal air cushion. So, that also improve the, the, the quality of the partition wall or the TL, TL value of the partition wall. So, this is very important if you go with a double leaf kind of a thing. The air gap between two leaves may fill with some kind of a acoustical blanket. So, it also enhance the total amount of the transmission loss. 
the proper uh, stiffener uh, as you know the stiffener at, uh, attachment will actually uh, reduce the, those kind of initial disturbance. So, the stiffener arrangement is required and this fixing of the partition wall with the wall or the ceiling has to be uh, proper because of the minimizing the coincidence effect in the zone of the, the actual middle frequency and noise leaks that has to be checked because you, as you know if there is any kind of a hole or any kind of a noise leak there is a decrease in the potential amount of the TL value. So, let us go to the last page where I have again two homework for you. One is you please write down or try to understand the uh, or uh, what is the significance of the STC sound transmission class value. And the second one is that if the average TL value of the last six contour, the last six the, uh, the frequency, the one third frequency of a partition wall is 35 dB, then what could be its STC value if all the criteria is fulfilled. So, uh, that is all for today. So, the airborne sound transmission is uh, within within with this three consecutive lecture number 31, 32 and 33 is now came to an end. In the next lecture on uh, what in the 34th lecture and the 35th lecture uh, we will uh, discuss about the structure bound sound in, uh, in this week. So, thank you very much.